I am Derek Hall, president and founder of Charter Real Estate School. With me today is Raul Sedarius, uh, CEO and founder of MarketThink, a marketing company that's built specifically for the real estate professional. So um, Raul's got a very unique uh, skill set when it comes to marketing, because again, it is geared towards people that are in real estate. Um, he's got a background in SEO, which for the uninitiated is search engine optimization, but then also content creation. And uh, that's particularly important for today's discussion where we will be talking about branding. And uh, a lot of people don't really necessarily know what branding is. So we're gonna unpack that a little bit and then also discuss the value of branding. And uh, it's particularly important to the two of us, uh, as I was saying earlier, because we met while we were working together at PropertyShark.com. Uh, Property Shark is you know, a known commodity in the industry. And uh, we worked with each other there and have since gone out on our own, started new businesses, and then had to basically rebrand. I, for myself, you know, being a trainer and uh, someone who was, you know, a known commodity as a known commodity, I was the property shark guy. So when I started Charter Real Estate School, I had to become the Charter Real Estate School guy, you know, and that was, you know, that took a bit of a shift, right? You know, people have known me for a certain thing for several years, and now I want them to know me for something else. So I had to rebrand myself as the charter real estate guy. And um, so I want to ask you first, Raul, let's talk about branding. What is branding and why is it valuable to real estate professionals? Yeah, first of all, Derek, um, thank you for the, for the nice introduction yep. uh, and the kind words. Um, I'm, uh, I'm happy to, to have this conversation with you guys. Uh, regarding branding, uh, branding, I would say is the most important um, aspect as a company, as a business. Right. Uh, it will it will set you up as an expert, be it right. a neighborhood expert or a real estate professional or any expert in any field. If you have a brand, uh, you have the base to grow as a business. And also it will enable you to access and use new channels easier. And when I say new channels, I'm referring to uh, maybe new social media channels, new right. platforms. If you have a brand, it will be easier for you to transition to newer trends. Um, right. And also it's a way to protect your business. And I will say that twice actually, uh, <laughs> because it's, it's quite important. Uh, you, you can see it every day that Google is changing algorithms. So right. SEO is changing. Facebook is trying to monetize its audience, which is fair enough. Uh, right. And also all these platforms are not doing, um, they're not NGO, uh, NGOs. So they're not doing something just for fun. They're businesses. <laughs> they exactly. might start providing you a service for free in the beginning, but in the end, they will do this uh, to get something out of it. Yeah, and we did that with Property Shark. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and uh, if you have a brand, it won't matter that much. If Facebook, it won't, uh, I don't know, give you organic reach. And right. if Facebook asks you to pay for something, it won't matter. So if you have a brand, you have a shield. And right. it's also, something that will make your marketing efforts so cost efficient in the long term that you have no idea so yeah and i think that's an important point also is because your brand really is your opportunity to define yourself and it allows you like for example like one of my favorite uh branding opportunities was what wendy's did uh yeah. back in the day when they got onto twitter uh, and for those of you that don't know um when wendy's was on twitter they have uh what can be what's called a savage Twitter account. So like the person, whoever runs their Twitter account is just mean, you know, they put out really funny, angry, mean tweets and they make fun of people. It's very counter to what, you know, the quote unquote personality of the actual restaurant is, you know, you've got this, this girl with red hair and pigtails, which is the symbol of this, this hamburger restaurant. But then when you go on Twitter, it's a very different feel. So it's still Wendy's, but you know, that account from Wendy's is mean. And like, that's an opportunity. That's what their brand, their brand on Twitter is being mean and funny. And I yeah, think that's absolutely. a huge opportunity. Absolutely. And we were saying that things change, but things don't change. Uh, and like Wendy did it a few years ago, uh, Gordon Ramsay, the chef yeah. is doing it nowadays on TikTok. So yep. basically he's using exactly the same tactic to do duets. 
and he's making fun of what people do and yeah. it's picking up steam he he grew uh, quite exactly. quite an audience doing that right and i think what's also great about that in particular is that is gordon ramsay's brand that's always exactly. been him so like where yeah. wendy's it was kind of like a pivot for him he's just like you were saying took his brand on the road to another platform like everyone's seen hell's kitchen they know that he's going to yell at people he's going to be mean so now he's like i'm going to do it to you on TikTok, you know exactly. and i think that yep. is kind of the beauty of it like you said the tools will change but the brand will stay his brand is applicable anywhere and uh that's kind of the fascinating aspect to it is like uh i remember one of the quotes that i read is you know the brand branding is your opportunity to tell your story you get mm -hmm. to define who you are you get to tell the public what your brand is and so let's talk a little bit about how real estate agents can build their brand particularly i think social media is probably the easiest way to do it because it gives all of us that are using it a, a bigger platform so yep. um let's get, give us some some ways that real estate agents can brand themselves on social media so first of all i would i would look at it even from a social media perspective i would look at it as a, as a way to future proof you and your business right. uh, because it's important and um that being said it's everything revolves around content even if it's social media and uh, content can be I don't know, uh, written content, uh, visual content, which is either video or images. Uh, and then it's uh, voice, which is quite trendy nowadays with Clubhouse. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I think the, this way of communication will pick up steam uh, yeah. quite fast. It's what TikTok used to be three or three years ago. So mm -hmm. it's trendy, but it's not that trendy. Uh, yet, <laughs> right. But it will pick up steam quite fast. Right. So in terms of social media, I would say, think about who's your audience mm -hmm. and what do you do? Think about the niche, the location. So if you are into commercial, then that's fine. Write it down. If you are into residential, that's also fine. Write it down and think about who's your, your potential client. Is right. it based on a certain ge geography? Is it, uh, I don't know, it, based on revenue? Uh, think about who's your ideal customer. And exactly. Then, exactly. And then think about what his questions are and try to answer those questions. And don't be afraid to provide information. Because one thing that I've, I've noticed is in real estate and yeah. in commercial real estate more specifically, uh, people don't share information. And it's not like we're in the 2000s. Uh, exactly. You need to adapt with the times. Uh, if you, if the, there's and, public information, right. share it. And I, I think that's an important point. I, I've belabored this over the years um, because you know there was a time, you know, as a real estate agent, you were the person with the keys that had yeah. to go to you, right? Like you couldn't see a property, you couldn't get access to properties without an agent. And now, Thanks to lots of companies out there, not just Property Shark, but you know, lots of companies out there, information's available. Real is, the real deal is a fantastic periodical that's not just industry specific anymore. People outside the industry read the real deal. And so there's all these different ways now that people are getting access to properties or getting a better understanding of real estate that the agent now has to kind of become a market expert. And yeah. I think social media is a great way to communicate that. You know, you can get on there and I think the pandemic helped us a lot as an industry, especially you know agents in particular, because everyone was inside. You literally had a captive audience. And so people had the opportunity to create their brand if they didn't have one before, You know, where something that was interpersonal completely now became virtual. And people, a lot of agents, I think, took advantage of the opportunity, started making videos. Ryan Serhan you know, yeah. is a great example of that. You know, We were talking about that before. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about like, you know, the value of what Ryan Serhant has been doing and why agents should copy that. Well, Ryan is doing a great job and he's not doing a great job since yesterday or one year ago. <laughs> right. I mean, he's the guy is an early adopter, which yeah. is amazing for him because even if you lose a train, if you're an early adopter, you're taking the next one. Exactly. And look at what he's doing with TikTok. So we were talking about, I think it was two years ago when mm -hmm. we've done uh, a webinar talking about social media yeah, and we were yeah. talking about TikTok 
and we were saying that yeah tiktok maybe is not for you um because the the age group uh two years ago was way too lower yeah. in the meantime uh those 16 years old maybe or 18 years old are 20 now uh, exactly. And also, uh, there are many more users that have been uh, that have joined the platform. And sure. think about this: if you're investing something into TikTok in four or five years' time, uh, those will be your customers. Yeah. And Ryan knows this, and he's building the brand. He's transitioning to a new channel, and he's doing what it what it's trendy. So what works. Right that specific audience and you need to adapt uh adapt your tone you need to adapt what your message and he's doing that perfectly i mean yep. hats off to him <laughs> he he launched a new brokerage and the guy and the media company a brokerage and, and a media company you know it's yeah. a very important point the yeah. guy is flying yeah and i think also like you made a good point is it's the long game you know branding is about the long game branding isn't about today or tomorrow, branding is about what are people gonna think of me five years from now, 10 yeah. years from now. It's it's a framework that should last, should endure and can grow as well. I think it's important to point out that a brand doesn't have to be stagnant. Again, going back to the Wendy's idea, right? Like they sell cheeseburgers, they don't have to be different, but it grew attention for them. And I think that's the important thing. Your brand becomes the way that you announce yourself. So for example, when I started charter real estate school, I opted to go into Instagram. Like I don't have a personal Instagram account, but I have a charter Instagram account. I share images, predominantly it's an image-based um, uh, uh, social media format. And so that's where I share flyers about upcoming classes. That's where I share tips, inspirational things. And I love it when people respond back to my messages saying, yeah, Derek, that's right. You want us educated and motivated. You know, like people get it. People will pay attention to what you're saying. And that's what agents need to do is make sure that they're putting out a uniform kind of presentation of themselves, like you were saying about uh, find out who your ideal client is and talk to them. That's what your brand is, is what you say to them. Exactly. Yeah, so and it's you... important, right. it's important to, to play the long game with, yes. with branding because that way, and we know we can give a few examples, but we won't name them. Uh, <laughs> you're, um, many people are complaining about the fact that uh, the, their, their listings are, basically hijacked by yeah, yeah. this thing's website. But if you have a brand, you are protected from that. And exactly. if you're not willing to invest something into you, because it's an investment in your business. And if you yeah. if you do that for the long run, in five years time, you will thank yourself. If right. you're not doing that, then you're played out by other other platforms. And, and speaking of which, that's a great point. And I think, you know, included in that is the idea that other agents are out there doing it, right? Like competition is huge, right? Everybody knows that there's other agents. We're always competing with, uh, you know, the person in the office, the person down the block, the person across town. And I think it's an important point to say that, you know, you have to be in it to win it, right? You know, if you're not in the social media sphere telling people who you are, then people are only going to see the other agent who is. You know, Absolutely. and I think, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm curious, like, why do you think other agents are not, you know, in the game? Why are people missing the train, you know, missing these opportunities, all these different platforms that come up? It's not easy. Yeah, it, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it takes time. It takes mm -hmm. commitment. Um, and everyone wants fast results. If you want right. fast results, you can do Google AdWords. You can do Facebook ads, but that's expensive. It's right. way more expensive to do that, even if you have some results, but it's way more expensive because it's not scalable. And mm. also you need, it doesn't, it doesn't bring branding. I mean, you can do that much with ads, you can do stuff, right. but it's way more expensive that way. And once you stop doing it, you're out. You're exactly. It goes away. Right. Yeah. And so like, yeah, I think, um, like I said, going back to my point about the pandemic, a lot of agents started doing videos. You know, a lot of agents that I knew in particular started doing interviews, started doing market reports, just doing the things to make themselves visible, knowing that there were people sitting at home wondering about that information. And, you know, there were a lot of agents that kind of sat on the sidelines like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do during this pandemic. Meanwhile, other agents were just destroying it with market share, 
because they were out there. Just the act of doing it, I think, is very important. And so why don't you talk a little bit about how marketing can actually help? I think it's an important idea to give people, because a lot of people don't know how they can approach it. So what are the, some of the things that market think can do to help agents with their branding? So first of all, you need to, you need to understand your audience and your objectives. Because right. if you're covering a neighborhood or a borough, it's, it's different and you can totally compete, compete with nationwide uh, listings portal. Right. Uh, and you need to know who you want to sell to. So if you, need, if you know that, and that's something that if you don't know that, uh, we can help you out define your audience. And that right. would be the first step because mm -hmm. there's no silver bullet, but there are some ways to define who you are, what you right. want to do. And then it's a, it's a framework that we, we help you understand what you need to do based on that one. Right. And there are ways to, to create uh, things to build your brand and basically you need to use the channel channels to protect you from the channels so exactly it, it, yeah you need to, to use what's out there now so you can be protected in the future so for example maybe seo is for you mm -hmm. maybe it's not and we will find out whenever we have that first conversation with you and we we ask you when do you want results to happen uh right. how do you want people to perceive you who is your target audience? Are you into rentals or sales? Are you into commercial or residential? So basically these questions and the answers for these questions define your, your persona. And then with these, we, we, we apply tactics, SEO, right. content creation, digital PR, and um, social media. Maybe paid ads is one way to do it, maybe it's not. And with content creation and digital PR, it's not that hard to be right. honest. You just have to put your head around it and think about content and uh, data nowadays is publicly available. Exactly. You, just you can need just... to put in the work. Right. It's not like 10 years ago when someone like Property Shark did the heavy lifting and right. they, they were scraping the internet, they were walking. Uh, all over the, uh, the city to yeah. get data, to put it in one uh, specific database, and then you will have access to that. Nowadays, right. you, you have it at your fingerprint. And there are public databases, free databases, paid services. You just have to use it. And yeah, based, absolutely. On that one, yeah, based on that one, you can come up with a report that's, fo that's focusing on your specific neighborhood. And you yep. will be the neighborhood expert. Exactly. Just by doing it, just by being there, you yep. get that brand. You know? Yeah. Think about the fact that uh, larger real estate portals, uh, they are focusing on uh, national metro areas, citywide, <laughs> maybe boroughs, uh, because obviously uh, New York asks it. But uh, they don't they don't do that much when it comes to going the extra mile and right. talking about that small space, that block that you're interested in. Exactly. And you can definitely do that. And yep. if you do that, then you're the expert and do yep. that consistently and you have a brand. There you go. That says it right there. You know, like to that point, actually, the next session that I'm going to be co-hosting with uh, my team, the Million Dollar Thinking, we have a web series that we're doing special for the expo today, we're doing that later on. We're doing just what you said. We're focusing specifically on the neighborhood Long Island City in Queens. So we've got four agents on who are going to give their perspective about how LIC was able to thrive during the pandemic. Those guys and the gal, Mary Beth, they're going to be the experts, right? Anyone who didn't know anything about LIC is like, oh, these are the people that know. And they are Thank automatically you. the experts just by being out there and uh, putting your name and your face associated with a piece of information brands you as the expert on that. And you can't get any better than that, right? Everybody that sees that now says these are the people. And that's, I think, what the value of the brand is, is that opportunity to communicate to other people what you know, you know? Exactly. And you know what's funny? Uh, most of uh, these guys that are, mm, are today uh, in the real estate industry, they have the knowledge. Yeah but they don't put it to good use in right. the format that's needed today. Right, you so, gotta tell people you know it. It's not enough yeah. to know it anymore. Exactly, yeah. 
And so I find that, you know, to be kind of one of the unique things about social media is it gives us that platform. And I'm noticing that obviously during the pandemic, we had a lot more people using video to great effect in the same way. And, you know, I actually have a CE class, you know, so people can get credits to learn how to do video for um, their social media, again, to build their own brand. And what I find interesting, you know, going back to the point about, you know, people don't want to do it is, oh, I don't like the way I look on video. I don't like the way I sound on video. Doesn't matter at all, <laughs> you know, no, because you're going to make yeah. money. It's an investment yep. in yourself, plain and simple. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't really matter. And people are overthinking it every day. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and I think that's really the thing is just start because if you don't do it, you don't have a brand, plain and simple. If you just sit there and hope things happen, you're not building a brand. And then what happens is, you know, basically your story gets told for you by somebody else. You know, then you're subject to a bad Google review, a bad Yelp review. But like, as you said, you know, you become platform proof, future proof, competition proof when you have a brand because then it speaks for itself. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, and if you don't do it, someone else will do it because if there's an opportunity, it won't stay there too much. So yeah, jump on it. Um, seize the day with social media. Right. If there's something that's not that used and uh, the space it's, uh, is allowing you to, to get in there and uh, prove that you're good, then do it. Yeah. yeah. And I like also that, you know, it's also an opportunity to, to let your personality shine through as well i mean it's it's really the best way to separate yourself from your competition you know there there's so many things that are out there that i i, I love watching and so for a, a friend of mine is a real estate agent he actually used to be on um ryan serhant's team and um so when ryan was doing million dollar listing he was doing thousand dollar listing and he's still <laughs> doing thousand dollar listing you can check it out on youtube uh shout out to noah kaplan it's a fantastic um show that he's doing on YouTube and you can see it on Instagram as well. And he's, I've over the years watched him grow it from just, you know, him being on the show to now incorporating other people that kind of go along with the idea of the show. So thousand dollar listing, you know, is about doing rentals that are cheap, you know, a cheap rental for thousand dollars a month is very, very cheap. And so now you have uh, people that are going on there giving tips on dumpster diving. You know, there's like, it's, it's funny. It's meant to be funny. And so you have skits about people, finding the three-legged chair on the street. Oh, three legs, but you can still do this. You know, there's so many things that you can do to establish yourself in the industry and separate yourself from the competition as well. And um, I, that's what they're doing. Those people are building their brand. Noah's brand is $1,000 listing now. He's that guy. And he's added to that over the years. You know, there's people that are the funny real estate agent, you know, the singing real estate agent. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people in the industry were actors who wanted to be actors. And so use that to your advantage. And if you weren't an actor or haven't been an actor, take a class, go to Toastmasters. You know, there's lots of things that you can do to kind of build your persona so that you're comfortable building your brand, right? You know, there's a little homework, I think, that goes into uh, what people can do to be more successful with their brand. Um, what are some things that you would, some other tips that you would say besides just having a website? Obviously, you got to have a website, but like, what are some things that agents can do to build their brand? I mean, having a website nowadays, it's like having a business card and keeping it on your desk. I mean, <laughs> it, it's exactly like that. It's, yeah. it's not enough. So if right. you don't do something with that website, build content for that website, promote that content, then it's pointless. Um, right. And then uh, basically that's, that's what your focus should be. Think about who you want to uh, to approach you, mm -hmm. and ask those questions that that person might have. It's as right. simple just get as in that. Front of it. Yeah. Just Even give them what they want guy. before they ask for it. Exactly. Even with uh, with the example that uh, you shared with us uh, earlier, if you remember, I don't know if you remember, it was like back in the day, six or eight years ago, we were thinking about, okay, what we need to do to get in front of people. Uh, okay. And we were looking at how many people are searching for listings that mm -hmm. are under certain thresholds. Right. And we noticed that people are searching under 800, uh, 1200, 1500. And we said, okay, well, this is interesting. Well, let's, let's build something out of it. Right. And that was it. And those pages, I mean, 
everybody copied the tactic afterwards. <laughs> right, like, exactly. If you're looking nowadays on listings portals, mm -hmm. you're seeing it all over the place. So right. it's standard practice now. At that time, it was something revolutionary. Yeah. yeah. And it's not something like that you are thinking about it like, yeah, it's rocket science. It's not. Right. But it was a demand for it. We, we, we see the, uh, we, we've seen the opportunity and we've done the content. And that right. content uh, eight years ago was a web page that yeah. was serving listings. Content nowadays means a video, maybe yeah. an Instagram reel, uh, a video on YouTube talking about how uh, the market is uh, in the first quarter of 2021. Yeah. Um, Talk about why it's worth keeping uh, your uh, your office, how to remodel your office, and things like that. I mean, exactly, just useful information, you know. And I think it, that reminds me actually of something that a good friend of mine, Eric Barron, said years ago at uh, at an event that we did. He said, "If you want to be associated with luxury, talk about luxury. Yep. It's that simple." <laughs> Going back to our point, you know, yep. you don't have to necessarily be the expert, but like for example, if you have an Instagram page. And the pictures you're posting are of luxury listings or even things that look like luxury. Guess what? People are going to associate you with luxury. And it's, I think that's kind of the important that. thing. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And that's branding. I mean, associate being associated with something that's branding. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that might be the thing that people don't always understand about it is just you again getting to tell people who you are and what you do. And uh, there's so many different ways we can go about it. And I think sometimes. Uh, to the point where we're talking about being toolproof, you know, these are all tools, social media, all these different aspects. Like if you want to be on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, that's fine. But I think it's also important to try to pick one, like focus on something and communicate your brand where you are, right? Like I don't see Wendy's on Instagram talking smack to people, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Gordon Ramsay is doing his thing on TikTok, you know? So like if you, you can own a space, it's okay to own a space uh, because that way you hedge your competition out of that space, right? You know, yep. if you're the luxury agent on Instagram, that's okay. If you're not the luxury agent on Facebook, that's okay too. I think you know. Exactly. Yeah, you know, it's important to use. To, it's important to understand how these tools work. So, for example, if you want to jump in um, on the Facebook train nowadays, mm -hmm. that's gone. Right. And yeah. Yeah. So it's it's pointless. I mean, it's not pointless. It will bring you something. But uh, if you're playing the long game, Facebook. I would say Facebook will go away within five right. years, five years time. So wow, that's bold. You heard it here first, guys. <laughs> I mean, it, it's happening. If right. you're asking a 25 year old or a 20 year old, uh, what do you think about the Facebook? He will say, yeah, that's something that my mom uses. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I think and that also is why Facebook owns Instagram. Like I said, I'm yeah. on Instagram because I, ex I expect that's where the industry is. So I saw the same thing that you're saying a couple of years ago when I decided to, to push my brand in social media, I chose Instagram and that's fine. That's a tool. That tool is also owned by Facebook. So no matter what happens with Facebook, the money, whatever happens on Instagram goes to them. And so it doesn't matter what platform you use. It's your platform and you got to take ownership of it. I think that's really the kind of most important thing about um, using social media for your branding is own something, do content, put things out there. If you don't want to make videos, make infographics, find the information that's related to who you want to talk to and talk to them, you know, tell them who you are, why they should use you. Yeah, thank you guys. Good. There he is. All right. Thank hey. you everybody for joining us. This is Raul thank and Derek guys. signing off. Have a great day. Guys, thank I want guys. to thank you both. Uh, you know, the attendees that attended, of course, there will be a thank you note going out with both Raul and Derek's information. So please continue to ask them questions thereafter. Um, give us a week. We will have the video. We have a whole bunch of videos we need to edit. So we need about a week or so. But once again, guys, Raul, great information. Derek, thank you so much for moderating. And uh, branding, again, is so important. Uh, we work with Raul. We work with Derek. Uh, we love them. We love working with them. So once again, I want to thank everybody. We'll be back in 10 minutes. And we are going to be talking about self-storage. Um, with Lurundi Roos, learn why self-storage should be a part of the diversified real estate portfolio strategy. So that should be very interesting to, uh, to hear as well. Um, well. We'll see you guys in 10 minutes. Thank you, everybody. See you later. Have a great Bye -bye. day.